Welcome to K-State Now with Interim University President Richard Myers. I'm Richard Baker. Richard, Welcome nice to, to the program. It's nice to be here with you, Richard. Thank you. First of all, I guess, have you received any kind of a charge from the regents on your duties here? No. I mean, the charge was to, uh, you're the interim president and you have all the responsibilities and the and the role that a president would have. So that's the charge. There's there's no restrictions on what can be done or so forth. They just said, uh, make the place uh, ready for the, the, the full-time president when he or she comes in this turn of, this, turn of the year, I guess. So you <clears throat> basically just kind of stepped into it blind. I, well, in a way, of course, but uh, I'd been doing work at K-State for 10 years, so I knew all of the vice presidents, or certainly most of them, uh, a lot of the deans, some of the faculty, been working at the foundation for a long time, so uh, uh, as part of the board over there. So I feel like I, I knew a little bit about K-State anyway, so I wouldn't say it was totally blind. Well, you're also a graduate, so you... Well, that was a long time ago, and it's just uh, Kansas State University, thankfully, has changed quite a bit since those days. So what's your first job as you come in here? I think the first big job is to, uh, to, to get our budget ready for uh, next fiscal year. And, of course, we got some cuts late uh, from, the, from the state that we have to accommodate. But that's, that's probably the biggest thing we have to wrestle with. That and some changes in the, in the, in the personnel uh, field where we have to, to do some things there that uh, are required at this point. So that, I think it's all it, right now the most important thing, I think, is budget-related. And then uh, a lot of things follow out out of that, student safety, Title IX, all those sorts of issues. The legislature went back into session to tie and deal with this school finance issue. Right. If they have to come up with another, a minimum, I guess, of $38 million, does that possibly mean more cuts here at the university? I think it possibly means that. Uh, they have some alternatives, I'm told. But we'll see what they do. Uh, they don't have a lot of time to do this. I think the legislature is motivated to, to do this fairly quickly because uh, they're all up for re-election. Uh, the primaries are in August. That's their, for most of them, their biggest fight. So they need to get out and start campaigning. Uh, so I think they'll do this quickly, whatever they do. And it, and it certainly could mean, mean more cuts. I've seen figures that they might have to come up with as much as $56 million. And then there is hovering in the background over forty million dollars that they may have to repay Pizza Hut. <laughs> that could that could hit us pretty hard. Oh, it hit us very hard. We all the cuts hit us very hard. We're not, you know, this is um, state support for higher ed has diminished over the years. Uh, any cut at this point is going to hit us very very hard. Tuition was going to go up five percent. Now it's up 5.81%? Correct. Yeah. Nobody likes to do that, of course. Uh, we're a land-grant institution, and one of the things that uh, we must do is provide access to higher ed for, for folks in the state and uh, for around the nation. And so to, to be true to our mission, one of the things we don't want to do is, is raise our tuition. But we had to in this case because we're trying to uh, at least make up for some of the, the state cuts to our, to our budget. We're not going to make up for all of it, but we can make up for some of it. And, and, and we have to do that because we want to, first of all, some of that will go to uh, students who have needs. Uh, some of it's going to go to faculty. A lot of it's going to go to infrastructure. And if you've been around Manhattan or K-State this summer, you know we have a lot of infrastructure coming online. Uh, we've got a, a, a new chill plant. We've got uh, piping uh, to get that over to the buildings that need it. We have have to hire new uh, custodial personnel to take care of these new buildings. So we have a lot of expenses that are associated with uh, the facilities that are all here to provide our students and faculty and staff, you know, a good experience. Is there a chance that that increase in tuition could backfire and a number of students, maybe too many, might not be able to pay it and we might see enrollment drop? Well, that's one of the things we're, we'll keep our eye on. We, we certainly hope not. Uh, we think we're still very competitive uh, in the state and around the nation in terms of uh, our tuition, but uh, we've got to we've got to watch that. That's what you know. We need. Uh, we we think enrollment this fall will be flat to last year, and last year was down a little bit. So we're looking at things we can do to increase enrollment a little bit uh, to keep it growing at a 
at a reasonable pace. But but yes, that's it's possible. Sure, we just have to we just have to watch that very carefully. Looking at other subjects here. And before we leave that, let me okay. just let me just uh, say that uh, in in. The years that I've been at the foundation, you know, we're in the middle of a billion-dollar campaign. Um, we're, we're, we're almost to 900 million, not quite yet, in that campaign with a, uh, a, a couple of years to go. Uh, a lot of that money is going to go to to scholarships, and so one of the ways we can offset uh, reductions in state budgets is through philanthropy. And we have some great alums and friends and corporations that have helped Kansas State immeasurably in trying to to make up the difference. And so um, I think I think we'll s this particular tuition increase. I don't I don't envision we'll lose many students over this. If any, we'll uh, we'll find other ways to give them help they need to to go to school here at K State. There was a recent study done called the Lincoln Project on the costs of public research universities. Mm -hmm. They don't see the aid from state governments across the country increasing anytime soon. Does that mean there's a possibility of more tuition increases down the road? Well, you're right. This is a nationwide issue with states uh, decreasing the, the amount of money they put towards higher education. So we've got to find other ways to do it. One of the ways is what I just mentioned, the philanthropy piece. Uh, and that's why we, when we set our goal for a billion dollar campaign, a, a lot of us were choking on that. Uh, the last campaign, I think, was half of half of that, and so we're we're thinking, can we possibly come up with this much? But the the answer was we have to if we're going to make up for the decrease in in state funding and continue to push uh, K State towards our our vision of uh, being a top 50 research university by 2025. We're on that path. Um, that's good for for the state. That's good for our students. Um, you certainly can't rule out tuition increases in the future, but <clears throat> I can just tell you this, they are all carefully considered. The Board of Regents was, uh, uh, they, they had a difficult time. They struggled with the tuition increase, you could tell from their from the debate that we just had a couple days ago, Wednesday in, in Topeka. And, and that's right, they should, and, and we all should. We should be concerned about that. The Lincoln Project also <laughs> talked about there being kind of a tripod of funding from private donors, from the state and from business and industry since they benefit by our students going to work with them. Are we tapping into business and industry? I think we are. You know, in our philanthropy, we have a lot of, excuse me, <coughs> we have a lot of corporations that are uh, vested in uh, Kansas State University that help us in that regard, uh, that provide uh, scholarships, internships, and most importantly, uh, jobs when they graduate after after college. I think. Last year, we placed 94% of our graduates in jobs in just a few months after leaving Kansas State. That's a pretty good record. You mentioned <laughs> 2025. Where does that stand right now? Well, uh, I'm going to get my first update. Uh, we're going we're to get an update from all the colleges uh, this fall. Uh, but where it stands is we're on, we're on track in some measures. Some are falling behind. So that's, that's what we'll learn this fall. We'll see what we're doing well, where we need to to uh, put more effort, more resources. Uh, in terms of the fundraising, we're doing pretty well. So the cuts, <laughs> I assume they have an impact on 2025? Sure, cuts have, a, have an impact and they, they, they could slow it down, uh, but we're gonna do everything we can do to, to stay, stay on that, that path. We expect whoever comes in here as the permanent president to, um, to continue on our path, uh, our journey to, towards 2025. Uh, you know, everybody on campus is invested in the outcome here. We, we all want a successful outcome. So, you know, we're used to challenges. It, it could slow it down perhaps, but we're gonna keep, keep marching. I'm not trying to move you on, but sure. what's the road to a permanent president look like right now? Well, they just, uh, they just announced the position description. It's up on the, uh, it should be on the K-State website uh, by now. Uh, it, was, it was on the foundation website not too long ago. Uh, and they go through uh, the characteristics of the university and then the characteristics of uh, the individual they're looking for to come in here and be the permanent president. And so uh, that's taken from the time from April to now to get, get that work done. And so now people will be submitting their, uh, their resumes and so forth to the, um, to the search firm 
So in September, uh, the search committee can start interviewing prospects. And we'll have somebody in place by when? Well, they hope to have a, a choice by December of this year and then somebody in place shortly thereafter. Uh, it probably depends on what that person, he or she, is doing currently and how quickly they can extricate themselves from, from their involvement in their, wherever they are. But uh, I'd encourage people to go look at the, um, the position description. It's, uh, it's a pretty good summary of Kansas State, and it's, uh, and it's good to look at you know, what, what, what the search committee is looking for. And, what, and by the way, they didn't just come up on their own. They did interviews all over uh, the K-State enterprise from Olathe campus, Lina campus, Maine campus. Uh, Everybody had a chance to, students, faculty, uh, staff, everybody had a chance to, to make an input. When we first started the program, you mentioned Title IX. Is there right. something going on with Title IX? No, not, nothing more than, than has been going on, but I think um, it's also an issue across the country as well that um, we've got to make sure we do the best job we can to provide a safe environment for our students. And uh, I think we do here at K-State, but it's just something we just got to keep working on. It's uh, those issues that are uh, associated with uh, uh, discrimination, uh, sexual assault, uh, rape. We just got to make sure we have the, we want to have the safest campus in the nation. I think we can do that, uh, but it, it just requires continual uh, vigilance, I'd say. Okay, one last thing. What's the difference between riding herd on a university and being a general in the Air Force? You know, I, I, think, I think the leadership traits for leading any large organization are pretty much the same. And uh, I mean, people have this vision of the military that you, you give orders and somebody follows them. Well, we know that doesn't work uh, at, at a, on a university campus. It, it also doesn't work in the military. I was chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and I'm often introduced as the commander of all US forces. I didn't command one person. I didn't have anybody I could march around the office, nobody. So everything I did uh, or wanted to do, I had to do through persuasion and through relationships. And I think it's the same uh, on a university campus. What you do is uh, you try to develop relationships with all the other key leaders, uh, build trust, and, uh, and get things done in a collegial uh, way. Uh, ultimately, often uh, the leader, the president, or the chairman has to make a decision. So I've heard everything, now we're gonna go this direction. Um, sometimes those will be, everybody will applaud. Sometimes they'll say, eh, why do you make that decision or she make that decision? Uh, that goes with the territory. But I think working up to that, the processes are remarkably the same. Okay. Thank you very much, President Myers. Thank you, Richard. This has been K-State Now. I'm Richard Baker.